This is lecture outline four, and we cover uh, redox reactions, our fourth reaction type. Uh, redox reactions, I don't think I would ask you to write a redox reaction necessarily, but I do uh, want you to understand how to, uh, if given a redox reaction, do a redox analysis on that. And we'll talk through that as we go. On the other hand, for combustion, dissolving, and double replacement reactions, our first three reaction types, I can ask you to write a combustion reaction given uh, something that is uh, being burned or going through combustion. Dissolving, so I can tell you that something is dissolving and ask you to write the products. And I can also uh, ask, given reactants, ask you what uh, the products are for a double replacement reaction. Now, as far as ox, uh, oxidation uh, or redox reactions, we're gonna start by uh, defining something called the oxidation number. And it is also called the oxidation state. My abbreviation for oxidation number is going to be O, capital O, capital N. And an oxidation number is a hypothetical charge assigned to an element or each atom in an element assigned to each atom in an element to help us keep track of electron movements. I won't say too much about uh, the hypothetical part other than sometimes these are closer to reality and sometimes they are farther from reality. Uh, and that in chemistry and certainly in this course, the largest actual charge you can see would either be plus three or minus three. And we'll see oxidation numbers that are uh, larger magnitude, larger numbers than that. And, uh, but they, and, and they may not be true, but they will help us. And so that's why we're doing this. Now, uh, redox reactions involve the transfer of electrons, and my abbreviation for electrons is E superscript minus sign, from one species to another. And uh, a redox reaction will always be made up of an oxidation half reaction. And the oxidation process is going to be the process of losing electrons or the process in which an element loses electrons. loses electrons, and uh, I'm just going to use E minus for electron or electrons. The reason they're called redox reactions is because uh, oxidation and reduction, or the reduction half reaction, they always occur together. So, and I guess redox sounded better than oxred. Reduction is the process in which an element gains electrons. Now, uh, when an element loses electrons, electrons being negative, here, so I'm gonna turn this period into a colon, colon, uh, in which an element loses electrons, colon, the oxidation number gets uh, more positive, or the oxidation number becomes more positive. And, for reduction, when something gains electrons, the oxidation number becomes more negative. Okay. And just a note here, these two always occur together. These two always occur together, meaning that if something loses electrons, something else must gain electrons for it to be a redox reaction. 
Now, uh, we're going to have some guidelines or rules for determining oxidation numbers. The first guideline is that the oxidation number for a free element is zero. The oxidation number for a free element is zero. And I've got some examples here. Uh, and my method of organization for doing this, uh, especially when my paper has lines on it, but even when it doesn't, is that underneath the species, I'm going to have a row for my oxidation number. And my oxidation number, each of these are free elements. They are elements, they're uncombined, even if they're diatomic. And what I'm trying to say is that each of these species has an oxidation number of zero. Guideline number two, the oxidation number for a monatomic ion is its charge. The oxidation number for a monatomic ion is its charge. And I'll set up my little system here. So much of chemistry is about staying organized and labeling things, uh, in my opinion. So sodium ion, uh, oh, monatomic. Mono means one. Atomic means atom. These are ions that are made out of one atom, such as sodium ion. Its charge is plus one. Its oxidation number is plus one. Chloride, charge minus one, oxidation number minus one. And when you see something like sodium chloride, that is an ionic compound, that means it's made up of monatomic ions, and therefore we know each of these elements' oxidation numbers. Okay? And you can already see we've got at least two different species involving chlorine. We've got elemental chlorine with an oxidation number of zero, and we've got ionic chloride with an oxidation number of minus one. Now, rule number three is that the sum of the oxidation numbers for a compound is equal to its charge. The sum of the oxidation numbers for a compound or for, uh, for each atom in the compound um, equals its charge, equals the compound's charge. And I think I want to go back and change that a little bit. Some of the oxidation numbers for each atom and the compound equals the compound's charge. And don't worry, we'll go over this. In compounds, uh, but let's do rule number four first, and then we've got a whole host of examples down here. In compounds, the oxidation number for, uh, for hydrogen is plus one, except in hydrides when it is minus one. And I'll point out that parentheses mean you're not going to see it. Uh, and unless I tell you it's a hydride and it's minus one. So what I want you to remember is that hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus one. In compounds, the oxidation number for oxygen is minus two, except in peroxides when it is minus one. Okay. And again, uh, we won't see peroxides. In the rare case in which we do, I'll tell you that oxygen is minus one. All right. Now, those are all the guidelines and uh, rules, if you will, for doing oxidation numbers. Now we're ready to run through a whole host of examples. I'll zoom in a little bit here. We'll start with H2O. And H2O, each of the uh, elements has its own oxidation number. And we have a rule for each of those elements. It says, in a compound, the oxidation number for oxygen is minus two. So I write minus two there. 
in compounds, the oxidation number for hydrogen is plus one. And that one's done, okay? And it gets more complicated, and we'll talk about that. Let's do sulfate next. For sulfate, oxygen is still minus two. Now, uh, we don't have a rule about sulfur, and one of the things that we're gonna try and solve here is the fact that when you're combined with various numbers of oxygens, things like sulfur have different oxidation numbers. Here's the process for solving for sulfur. We need to use uh, rule number three, the sum of the oxidation numbers for each atom in the compound equals the compound's charge. All right, so there are four oxygens. Each of them has an oxidation number of minus two, so this is another row down here, and I'm gonna call this the total oxidation. It's just something I made up, but it helps me solve the problem, and that's the key here. However you solve the best is your technique. All right, so there's minus two, there's four of them. For the oxygens, we can think of this thing as the total oxidation as minus eight. And we can see that the charge here is minus two. So we know that according to three, the sum of the oxidation numbers must be minus two. That's equal to the charge. Then we sort of work our way around this way and we say, okay, x minus eight equals minus two, x equals plus six, and plus six with only one sulfur atom in the compound, that full on charge, that oxidation number I mean, not the charge, that oxidation number is plus six for sulfur. This is where we get into the hypothetical nature of these charges. And that's okay though, plus six is correct. And for sulfate, that will always be the case. Uh, now, let's jump over here to our first compound with three elements, two of which we have rules about, guidelines. We know that oxygen is minus two. We know that hydrogen is plus one. And that those are the oxidation numbers. Those are the answers I want. This stuff down here, where we add, multiply it out, and that, that's our work. That's our process. Now there are, again, four oxygens. Four times minus two is minus eight. There are two hydrogens. Two times plus one is plus two. Now uh, I know that there's no charge, so the whole thing equals zero. And now I can solve for my x. Two plus x minus eight equals zero. X equals six or plus six, however you want to do it. And the oxidation number squinched in there is plus six for sulfur. Uh, I'm gonna leave this one over here as a companion problem. And let's jump down to some examples involving some other elements. Let's see, that's a little flatter there, all right. So set it up, gotta set them up before you can knock them down. Got my two lines here. Uh, we have a rule about not hydrogen, it is always plus one. And what you should see is knowing the rules for hydrogen and oxygen, you can do anything else. So like there's only ever one unknown for each compound. Uh, no matter how far and no matter what the example is. And if you think there's more than one one unknown, come talk to me, we'll figure it out. Okay, there are three hydrogens. Three times plus one is plus three. There is no charge, right? The any charge would be up there and there's nothing there. And then that means that I'll skip the X part. That means that this must be minus three. And since there's only one of them, that has to be minus three as well. Okay. There are some other examples here. Uh, let's jump over to this one. Nitrogen dioxide. Oop. All right. Minus two, minus four, minus two times two is minus four. The whole thing equals zero. 
that means this must be plus four. And since there's one nitrogen, that nitrogen is plus four. And this is a good example of how, there we go, you can uh, get differences in oxidation number depending upon what the compound is. Here we have nitrogen, which is has an oxidation number of plus four, and here we have minus three. So the oxidation number of nitrogen has varied quite a bit, depending upon what compound it's in. There are some other examples to do. We have some more examples on the next page. These are going to involve carbon, and we want to do a, a number of these as well. So oxidation number here, Set it up. Uh, and I'll just do a couple of these. Let's see. Um, let's do this one first. Plus one, four of them. Minus four, minus four. Carbon has an oxidation number minus four in this example. Here, see I've got H's and H's, I've got H's in two, I've got H's in two different places. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to scratch this out. I'm gonna rewrite it as C, H4O. That to me makes it, uh, it more like a, uh, an empirical formula, which is fine for doing oxidation numbers. Ooh, set that up a little bit. Uh, we have rules about oxygen, that's always minus two. We have rules about hydrogen, it's always plus one. There's only one oxygen, but there are four. And mathematically, these are amazingly simple problems that I have amazingly or not so amazingly messed up so many times. I know this has to equal zero. I know that the number here has to be something. It's actually minus two. And so many times in the past, I've mixed up the sign. So once you write down this number, may I suggest that you always re-look at your numbers to make sure they do add up? I've Again, I've made a lot of mistakes on this. We still have one carbon. Its oxidation number is minus two. We went from minus four to minus two. There are other examples that extend over here um, that you can do to show different oxidation numbers. I'm gonna jump down here to Propane, which I've condensed into C3H8. Setting up my formalism. Uh, and again, this is much easier to work with. Hydrogen plus one. There are eight of them this time. The charge equals zero. And now, so follow this with me. This has to be minus eight for this thing that I'm calling the total oxidation. Again, total process. Then I know that there are three oxygens, sorry, three carbons. And uh, so we could also call this three X if we're looking for X as our oxidation number. Three X equals minus eight. Divide through by three. X equals minus eight thirds or minus 2.67 and we have a non-integer oxidation number that too is okay especially when we consider these are hypothetical numbers hypothetical charges if you will all of these will help us keep track of electrons which is the point of oxidation numbers uh, and we'll show that next here's another example I will call this a companion problem. Some of the others are probably in the companion problem notes as well. Now, let's zoom out a little bit. In a redox reaction, determine the oxidation number for each element and then determine what, if anything, has been oxidized and reduced. So this is our first redox reaction. It's got multiple reactants and products. It's the same setup though. And so I draw my lines and then my, my rows, if you will, uh, I have then each element split into its own box so I can write its oxidation number. 
like so. Okay, still doing setup. Now it's time to use the guidelines. Anytime you see oxygen in a compound, it's minus two. Anytime you see hydrogen in a compound, it's plus one. And uh, a couple notes about this one. So the way I do oxidation numbers, I ignore coefficients. Mm, yeah. And uh, I might note, ignore coefficients to find oxidation numbers. So that should you look back on these notes in uh, six months or a year when you're in a more advanced chemistry class, uh, if you are, then you'll see that we're finding oxidation numbers here, that you do need to include the coefficients when you do things more complicated than this with, uh, as far as oxidation and reduction. Okay. So that's just to be clear, we ignore coefficients. So when I look at this compound, I will only have one hydrogen and three oxygens, not anything having to do with that coefficient. All right, so this is what we know according to the guidelines. Well, uh, guidelines tell us something else too, and that's about copper. Copper, rule number one says, uh, any free elements have an oxidation number of zero. And so far, we're looking pretty good. I still see two elements that we don't know here. But we actually do know something about this. This, if we remember our strong electrolytes uh, and ionic compounds, this is copper 2 nitrate. And copper 2 nitrate is made up of copper 2 ion with a 2 plus charge, monatomic ion charge is oxidation number. Shoo! Now we're down to at only one unknown in each of these compounds. I feel pretty good about that. Because otherwise, then we can use this total oxidation approach to figure things out. I have uh, one hydrogen. I have three oxygens. I know that the whole thing adds up to zero. And the number that goes in here is plus five. And since there's only one nitrogen, plus five. That is the oxidation number for nitrogen. Let's tackle this next one, copper two nitrate next. Now there's two times three, that's six oxygens. Six times minus two is minus 12. Plus two for my one copper ion. And then no charge. My total oxidation on my nitrogens, there are two of them, is plus 10. And since there are two of them, 10 divided by 2 is plus 5. Continuing, I have two oxygens, minus 4, no charge, plus 4 minus 4 equals 0. I have a plus four oxidation number. And over here, oh, I have rules about this. Water plus, hydrogen is plus one, oxygen is minus two. Water is actually a nice check because there are rules about both parts of it. And then you can uh, practice by saying plus two for the hydrogens, minus two equals zero. Water always checks out. All right, let's see what we got here. So, so, so far there's nothing new. We've just applied the rules to this reaction instead of just a single compound or ion. Uh, okay, now we're gonna look for oxidation numbers that have changed. We have uh, car uh, excuse me, copper here that is zero on the reactant side. We have copper that is plus two on the product side. So I'm gonna connect those with a bold dark line. And uh, then uh, nitrogen is plus five on the reactant side. Some of them are plus five on the product side, but some of them are plus four. And so I am connecting the oxidation numbers themselves, not anything having to do with the total oxidation, because that can get pretty weird. 
Okay, so now I've identified what has changed. Then I have to decide, okay, what has been oxidized and what has been reduced. We said oxidation was losing electrons, and when something is oxidized, the oxidation number gets more positive. Copper was oxidized. My acronym for this is uh, when you lose electrons oxidation, so that's going to be LEO. Lose electrons is oxidation. Now, uh, reduction, we said you gain electrons, and that is reduction. And when you gain electrons, you go from plus five to plus four, that is uh, getting more negative. Uh, is that how I said it? Getting more negative. Uh, more negative, that's right. And the acronym here is GUR. And the way that I remember it is Leo the Lion says GUR. Okay. So the reactant that was oxidized is copper. The reactant that was reduced is HNO3. Uh, and specifically, if the question was what element is reduced, we would say nitrogen in nitric acid. Okay. The reactant that was oxidized and the reactant was reduced, that's what I'm gonna ask you on quizzes and exams. There are two other terms that are relatively common and the good to know, I will not ask you, so I will put this whole block down here in parentheses. You can look it up if you need to. It turns out that the thing that was oxidized is the reducing agent, because when you yourself are oxidized, you allow or you give agency to something else to be reduced. So the thing that was oxidized is the reducing agent. And the thing that was reduced is the oxidizing agent. And these two are always flipped like that. And it's useful to know that the terms exist. However, I will only ask you these top two for simplicity's sake. And that's a full analysis. That is what's called a redox analysis for this course. Um, is this a redox reaction? Let's save this as a companion problem, except that I will tell you that it is. Now, uh, single replacement reactions are redox reactions. Uh, single replacement reactions are not a type of reaction we've covered and have to be able to memorize and write. However, if I give you a single replacement reaction, uh, and we'll talk about these later in the course, you should be expected, or you should be able to do a, an oxidation number analysis. And in fact, we'll take it one step farther when we get down here to writing oxidation half reactions and reduction half reactions. But before all that, we set up to do determination of oxidation numbers. We see an element, a free element on the reactant side. We see a free element on a product side. Both of those have oxidation number zero. We see hydrogen and oxygen and more oxygen there. Continuing, uh, we've done this one already, but it's worth doing again. We've got uh, minus eight for the oxygens. No charge on the sulfuric acid, H2SO4. We've got uh, plus two, and solving here, plugging in for x, x must be plus six, and since there's only one sulfur, that must be oxidation number plus six. We know what magnesium is. Magnesium is a monatomic ion. Oxidation number plus two. Filling everything in. This sulfur must be plus six as well. Nothing has changed for sulfur in this reaction. Connecting terms, this time I'll do it in red. Actually, I'll do it in green. So magnesium went from zero 
So plus two, that's lose electrons oxidation. Hydrogen went from plus one to zero. That is more negative, that is grrr. Okay, and again, we could ask you what was oxidized, what uh, reactant was oxidized, what reactant was reduced. This time we've done it slightly differently. Oxidation half reaction is going to start with the thing that is oxidized. Usually includes the phase as well. And I'm gonna leave a little arrow there. And goes to the other side for the product side for magnesium. And if we were doing, uh, uh, if we were noting that this is a strong electrolyte, it would break up 100% into magnesium two plus, and it would be aqueous. And that's not quite all we need. The last thing you need for an oxidation half reaction is to note that the electrons have been lost as magnesium goes from oxidation number zero to plus two. So we have, in this half reaction, produced two electrons. Down here, um, for the reduction process, reduction half reaction, we'll start with H, aha. Well, we'll use our toolbox here. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid. It breaks up 100% into 2H+, which are aqueous, and goes to H2, which is gas. And we need two electrons here. See how this is two times plus one is a plus two charge, zero charge here. We add two electrons and now each of these half reactions is not only balanced for mass and law of conservation of mass, meaning we have the same number of atoms on each side. It's also what's called balanced for charge. So zero charge here, plus two, minus two, zero charge, and likewise in the reduction half reaction. So these are half reactions, and they're um, more about what, so keeping track of the electrons, what lost the electrons, the magnesium, what gained the electrons, the hydrogen. Then we have a companion problem, which is very similar to that last one. And we will just simply note that combustion reactions are redox reactions as well. This will remain a companion problem too.